Hey guys, we got quite the video in store for you here. So I've just got done testing four of AMD's new CPUs, the 5600X, the 5800X, the 5900X, and the 5950X. So we're gonna be looking specifically at AMD's claim that there is a 19% IPC uplift from Zen 2 to Zen 3. And we're mostly gonna be looking at this in the form of gaming benchmarks. So for you gamers out there, this is a video for you. So first, let's talk about how the new AMD CPUs regulate their boosts. So I'm gonna paraphrase AMD here. Precision 2 boost does not have an all core or single core boost, and such thinking should be discarded on the product. Precision 2 boost is an opportunistic boost algorithm that drives the loaded cores to the highest possible frequency until a limit is empowered with socket power, VRM thermal limit, VRM current limit, or max clock speed for the part. So, what that means is there is there is a difference in how Intel and AMD advertises their boosts. Um, Intel advertise likes to emphasize on their single core boost, which is significantly higher than the all core. Whereas AMD, now we're seeing with this new boost algorithm on Zen three, is more so focusing on all of the cores all of the time. So in testing. Um, Anecdotally, I've seen that all of the CPUs more or less hit their max boosts with the exception of the 5950X, which did occasionally dial back to about 4.7. But this is still a huge improvement over Zen 2, which rarely approached the maximum boost threshold. Um, so to kind of go back and touch on how the Intel and AMD CPUs differ in their boost algorithms, um, like I said, the AMD is aiming for all core, whereas Intel, all core boosts aren't necessarily clearly advertised. So for example, a 5900X is can boost up to 4.8 gigahertz on all cores, whereas a 10900K, the direct competitor, can boost up to 4.9 gigahertz on all core, but they advertise up to 5.3. So that's just something to interesting to keep in mind. So as far as the support for these new CPU goes on motherboards, the 500 series motherboards will support the CPU at launch. So as far as motherboard support goes for these new CPUs, the 500 series motherboards will support these CPUs at launch with an AGISA version of 1.0.8 or higher. However, AMD does re recommend a, an AGISA version of 1.1 or higher because it will behave better with the boost clocks and the power allocation. Um, 400 series chipset will support these chips, but it's going to vary by manufacturer. AMD has told us that it's gonna be about January. Um, it's gonna vary by a few weeks for each manufacturer as each board has to be validated. So, on to the testing. Um, first, let's talk about the methodology. Um, each test was ran at least three times, and if all scores were in the margin of error of each other, with about 2%, the median score was kept. So I would like to make some notes about our testing hardware. The AGISA version needs to be at least 1.0.8. Um, the newest one available at time of testing was 1.0.8.1. Um, so again, you might see slightly different performance um, when you get these CPUs in your hand, you have a more updated BIOS version. The cooling completely overkill. So that shouldn't be a factor in these tests. So for our first benchmark, this is one of my favorites for synthetics. Uh, we have Geekbench. Now this goes through a lot of general purpose and specialized uh, algorithms for computing. Um, so we saw that Zen 3 is absolutely smashing in this benchmark. Um, we see about a 25% performance uplift between the 3950X to the 5950X on the single core performance. However, the multi-threaded is still quite similar with only a 7% uplift. So be interesting to see what AMD did to cause that. Um, as far as AMD versus Intel, we are seeing a consistent 20% improvement from the Intel single core to the AMD single core across the board. Um, the multi-threaded improvement is about a 10% gain over Intel. Um, with the exception of the 5900X versus the 10900K, since that is a 12 core SKU versus a 10 core SKU. So moving on to Cinebench R20, we're seeing the similar multi-thread performance improvement from the 3950X to the 5950X, about 10%. Now, this is where 
AMD gets a significant jump over Intel in this, in this um, production type workload. So we're seeing upwards of 20% improvement on this multi-core score across the board. The 5950X versus the 10900K, we were seeing a 30% uplift. Um, 5800X versus 10700K, 29%. I mean, it is an absolute bloodbath considering that these processors are priced very similarly. So next we have the time spy. I don't want any of this. Leave me alone. This is harassment. <laughs> so next we have time spy extreme, which I would say is an ideal scenario for multi-threading. Um, a lot of games you won't see multi-thread this well, but it is kind of like a vision into the future, how games are going to perform once they're better optimized. So with that said, we're seeing the 5950X and the 3950X performing almost identically, which is a pretty big surprise considering how much single core improvement we're seeing. Um, now moving on from AMD versus Intel, we're seeing 10 to 15% uplift over Intel. So again, AMD is maintaining that lead. So moving on to our gaming benchmarks, we have two use cases in mind. The first use case is aiming for that 60 FPS mark. Now, seeing as our test bench has a 3080 in it, the 60 FPS mark is 4K with ultra settings. Now, the second use case is as fast as possible. Maybe you've got that new 360 hertz monitor that you're trying to cap out. How are the CPUs going to limit it? So for our first gaming benchmark, we have Red Dead Redemption 2 and 4K Ultra. Um, Red Dead Redemption, I chose this game because it's a pretty good example of Vulkan. Vulkan is similar to DX12, but not quite the same. You'll see performance differences. Um, so with that said, when you look at the average frame rates, they're about the same across the board within margin of error. But when you look at the 1% lows, that's when it starts to get interesting. You can see the significant difference between Zen 2 and Zen 3, as well as between AMD and Intel. You can see between the 5900X and the 10900K, the difference in 1% lows is about 5%, and that scales all the way up to 18% in the 5600X versus the 10600K. Anecdotally, I would like to mention that the 3950X, the 10600K, and the 10700K all had significant stuttering around the alley scene, which is why you see that big difference in the 1% lows. Um, all of the Zen 3 as well as the 10900K did not have that issue. So now looking at the same game in 1080p low, this is where we really start to see things differentiate. So from moving from the Zen 2 to the Zen 3 architecture, we're seeing a 26% improvement in the average frame rate, as well as the 1% lows. Then we move on to AMD versus Intel, and consistently across the board, we're seeing AMD outperform by about 15% in both the lows and the averages. So for our next example, we have Horizon Zero Dawn as our first DirectX 12 implementation. Um, so in the 4K Ultimate preset, it's a wash can't really see any differences. And you're gonna tend to see that happen in higher resolutions with DirectX 12 games as they're supposed to utilize the multi-core performance a little bit better. When you move on to the 1080p performance, that's where we start to see some huge differences. Um, so from the 3950X to the 5950X, you can see there's a 25% gain in average FPS as well as the 3950X is lagging behind everything with some significantly low 1% lows. Now, if we move on to the 5900X versus the 10900K, you can see it's almost a tie, but as you move far, further down the line, the differences grow. So between the 5800X and the 10700K, there's about a 7% difference in averages. And then moving down to the 5600X and the 10600K, we're seeing a 13% difference in averages. All with similar 1% lows though. So for our final game example, we have Metro Exodus. Now for the first uh, preset we ran, we ran it in RTX, which is the DirectX 12 mode. Interesting performance results here. We see that the, the Intel barely edges out AMD across the board by roughly 10%. Um, interesting to see since AMD has been leading thus far. When we move into the 1080p low settings, we see AMD is jumping ahead again. Now, this is the most extreme example of jumps in performance in this game. With the difference between the 3950X and the 5950X being a 40% increase in average frame rate. Moving on to the Intel versus AMD, we see a 
another example of the 5900X and the 10900K performing very similarly. However, moving down the line, we see that gap grows again. 5800X and the 5600X both perform about 15% faster than their counterparts. So for our final example, we have Metro Exodus running 1080p low in DirectX 11 mode. Now, this is the most extreme worst case scenario example as DirectX 11 is the most single core focused API. While all games are still somewhat single core focused, APIs like Vulkan and DX12 manage to minimize that to an extent. However, moving back to this older API, this is where you really see the differences due to the single core performance. Now looking at the 3950X versus the 5950X, this is where we see the biggest jump across all the benchmarks with a 42% improvement in performance. Now moving down the line, we see that the 5900X and the 10900K are still managing to stay rather close. However, the 5900X is gaming, gaining a bit more lead than in previous benchmarks. Now, moving on to the 5800X versus the 10700K, we see that AMD performs 35% faster in average frame rates. And the gap only grows lower down the line with the 5600X performing 40% faster than the 10600K. So if you are the kind of gamer that likes older games that might be running on DirectX 11, the point to be made for AMD is even larger. So with AMD's claim of a 19% IPC improvement in mind, did they hit that target? Well, in the single core, they definitely well exceeded it with upwards of 30% performance gains over last generation in some scenarios. However, the multi-core is still within about 10% of last generation. Um, overall, I think this processor lineup is mainly a big win for gamers. Um, even with the newer Vulkan and DX12 APIs, which are better with multi-core performance due to the unique instructions per core, single core performance is still huge. And we saw those results in the benchmark. Um, AMD is the new king, in my opinion. Um, if I were to go buy a processor today, I'd probably go pick up a 5800X, you know, eight core, 16 thread, throw up some Google Chromes in the background, not worry about it, play your games. Um, what do you guys think is the best processor out of this lineup? Are you guys surprised? Uh, let us know down in the comments and thank you for watching. If you like the PC in this video, be sure to contact our sales team at sales at avadirect.com or you can head over to our website by clicking on the link in the description below. You can choose from many pre-built options, gaming or workstation based, or use our configurator to build a PC of your dreams. Be sure to click that thumbs up button and subscribe, and don't forget to follow our social media channels at avadirect.com. Stop messing with my sleeves, they were down in the first place. They're gonna be looking at these cuts and be like, why?